Well, let somebody shout a big hallelujah. If you know that tonight is your night, that whatever problem you came here with, you will not leave with, I need you to jump to your feet and shout a really big hallelujah. Let us pray. There is none holy as the Lord. There is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. There is none holy as the Lord. Holy as the Lord. There is none holy as the Lord. Holy as the Lord. on tonight, we have come here with great expectation. Daddy, do something wonderful. Do something marvelous. Amen. Do something miraculous. Heal bodies. Change destinies. Save souls. And at the end of it all, take all of the glory. Let your children get all of the blessings. We say this to the glory of your name and the devil's shame. We have prayed. Someone say amen, amen. and amen. Come on, clap your hands and shout another big hallelujah. May I first take the time to thank my mommy and my daddy for this great opportunity to stand on this exalted altar and to share with you what the Lord has placed in our hearts. I want you to look at two passages of scripture tonight, and I would um, ask you to please look at Genesis chapter number 17, verse 1, Genesis 17, verse 1, and I know that I may be saying it a little bit differently. I say Genesis because it is spelled G-E-N-E-S-I-S, -E -E -S, and a gene is the beginning, the amoeba, the molecular makeup the origin, the start of a thing. So in Genesis chapter number 17, verse 1, I wanted you to read this and to hear this because the Almighty God is going to give someone tonight a new beginning. Oh, come on. If you believe I'm talking to you, shout hallelujah. Genesis 17, verse 1. New King James translation reads, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am Almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. I then would like for you to look with me, please, at 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter number 3. Verse 5, and it reads this way. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. My assignment tonight is to speak with you concerning Jehovah El Shaddai, but I would like to expand it and simply say to you, tonight you will encounter the more than sufficient God. I thought your hallelujah would be louder than that. Your amen would be louder than that. Say that with me. Say, tonight 
I will encounter the more than sufficient God. Whenever we hear this name, El Shaddai, as we're hearing it in Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, it makes reference to um, God's ability versus man's frailty. It speaks to the fact that when man is pressed and in desperate need of assistance, it's only Jehovah El Shaddai that can step in and work on his behalf. Let me say to you, as I was studying for this, the Almighty God spoke with me and shared with me that whenever he is going to expand someone's vision, when he is going to shift their assignment, or when he is going to change their destiny, he has to reintroduce himself. I'll say that again. Whenever the Almighty God is going to expand your vision, shift your assignment, or change your destiny, he reintroduces himself. Why? Because we know him from where we've been, but he wants us to know him for where he's taking us. I wish someone would look at your neighbor next to you and say, get a good look at me now. I'm on my way someplace else. The reason that the Almighty God gave our daddy the theme of double portion and then broke it down so that each night would have a different concept and perspective is because he is about to change someone's destiny as he did with Jacob in Genesis chapter 35 verse 11. Genesis 35 verse 11, he said, what is your name? And he said, my name is Jacob. He said, no longer is your name going to be changed Jacob. I have a good feeling deep within me that someone is about to get a new name. If you believe I'm talking to you, shout a big hallelujah. He'll change your destiny so he has to reintroduce himself. But also, if he's going to shift your assignment, he has to reintroduce himself. As he did in Exodus chapter number 3, verses 13 through 15. Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. Moses was content walking around the backside of the mountain, leading sheep. God says, I'm going to change your assignment. You're going to go from leading sheep around a mountain to leading a nation to a promised land. When he told him that, Moses said, you want me to go to Pharaoh? You want me to go down and talk to your people? Pharaoh doesn't know you. Your people don't know you. Who should I say is sending me? And that is when the Almighty God told him, let me introduce myself. He said, I am that I am. I am the God of your fathers. Tell them that's who's sending me. 
I want someone to understand that the I am God, the God who is more than sufficient, Jehovah El Shaddai is introducing himself to just a few other people other than me because tonight your destiny will change. Your assignment shall be shifted and he is moving you from wandering to leading. If you can receive it, shout another big hallelujah. Yet in Genesis chapter 17 verse 1, Genesis 17 verse 1, when he introduces himself to Abram, he is doing it because he is going to expand his vision from a man who has no heir to a man that will have heirs as countless as the sand on the seashore and stars in the sky. I'm telling you that on tonight, this all-sufficient God is going to visit someone and your season of barrenness, your season of fruitless efforts, it comes to an end tonight. If you can receive it, shout a big hallelujah. I had a pastor to come to me and he said, he said, Sturdivant, listen, I've been watching what the Lord has been doing with you and in your life and I see that he blessed you with twins. And he said, I want to be what you're being, I want to do what you're doing and I want twins as well. And I said, come here please. And he came close. I put my right hand on his stomach and I spoke to him and I said, the same God that did it for me will do it for you. I want you to know he too had a set of twins. I'm sending this word out to someone right now and I'm telling you not only will God give you a child, but he will give you double children because you have come to this Congress of double portion. If you can receive it, please jump to your feet and say, Father, this night, whatever I'm desiring, double it for me, double it. Go in here, pray like warriors now, pray. Whatever I'm asking you for, whatever my prayer request, whatever you have promised me, tonight, in this very Congress, double it for me. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be for you in Jesus' name. I said, so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Just before I came to get on the plane to come here, I went past to check on my mom who my senior sister takes care of. My mom is now 100 years old. When I came into the room, her bedroom, she was still sleeping. I spoke out to her because I call her sugar pudding. I said, sugar pudding, here I am. And she rubbed her eyes to try to catch the vision of who I was. Her mind is not as strong as it used to be. So she was trying to focus and see who I was. But I started singing some of the hymns that she taught me when we were much, much younger, and she taught me my walk with God. And the moment I started singing, suddenly she put her feet up in the bed, 
started rocking her knees and patting her feet and clapping those little hands together. One of the songs that she taught me that we sang together said, all that I need is in Jesus. He satisfies, joy he supplies. My life would be empty without him. Everything in Jesus I find. That song that she taught me speaks to the all-sufficiency of God. It lets me know that everything that I need is in Him. So the question is, if He is an all-sufficient God, what does that mean? Well, sufficient is defined as to be enough. It means adequate. It means as much as is needed. Sufficient means equal to what is specified. Sufficient means competent, well, qualified, able. But the moment that you put the word all in front of it, as to say all sufficient, all means more than. And when you put more than in front of sufficient, you are now saying that God is not just sufficient, but he is more than enough. He is more than adequate. He is more than what is needed. He is more than competent, more than qualified, more than able. It means that our God is a God of excessiveness. He's a God of overflowing. And I believe that someone here tonight, the Almighty God is going to embarrass you with his excessiveness. He is showing up this night in this Congress to embarrass you with how lavishly he can bless you, how lavishly he can heal you, how lavishly he can deliver you. You are leaving here not just with enough, but with reserve and with leftover because he is not only omnipotent, he is omnicompetent. How competent is he? According to Ephesians 3.20, Ephesians 3.20, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Please, somebody, holler and say, tonight, I'm leaving with overflow. If you don't believe that God can bless you excessively, I don't have time to unpack everything. Let me lift one or two things, and then we'll leave. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 7, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 7, that that widow who only had a little bit of oil left in her house, she went from being one that was on welfare to being one that said farewell to poverty. The Lord shifted her destiny because he is more than enough. In Psalm 23.5, Psalm 23.5, you've heard our daddy teach us over and over again that God does not just fill your cup, which would be enough, but he allows our cup to run over to let us know that he is a God that has more where that came from. Even in Mark chapter number 6, verse 42, and 43, Mark 6, verse 42 through 43, the lad that came with just two fish and five loaves 
went back home with 12 baskets full left over, so much so that what he could carry by himself when he came, he needed assistance with going back home. I'm believing for someone that is coming to this meeting this week. It is not by coincidence. It is not by happenstance that you are here. The Almighty God has allowed you to come because there are destiny helpers that are waiting to assist you with what God is about to release to you. If you can receive this word from this altar, once again, shout another hallelujah. For someone that's listening to me, that Jehovah El Shaddai is going to open his storehouse to you. If you can believe it, shout amen. So what is he sufficient to do as I round up? Number one, he is more than sufficient to deliver. I said he is more than sufficient to deliver. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18, it says, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. I prophesy to someone that's not just in here, but who is watching us on one of our media, many media platforms. Every plan and scheme that is being devised for your downfall, the all-sufficient God will scatter every one of them. Oh, come on, shout louder, amen. For the Bible says there is no weapon that is formed against you, Isaiah 54 and 17, Isaiah 54 and 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Not only is he more than sufficient to deliver, but he is also more than sufficient in power. The Bible says in Psalm 62, verse 11, Psalm 62, verse 11, it says, God has spoken once, twice have I heard, there's the double portion, what is it? Power belongs to God. That means that if God is for you, he is worth more than all of the world that is against you. So I don't care who you've got that's coming to attack you, who is telling you you're not going to make it, Whoever has told you you're not going to make it to your destiny, the Almighty God is sending power in your direction. Shout a bigger hallelujah. Not only is he sufficient in power, but he is sufficient in grace. He's more than sufficient. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you so that you always have all sufficiency in all things so that you will have abundance in every good work. I need to sound the alarm to someone tonight. Your season of struggle has just ended. I said the more than enough God, the all-sufficient God, the Jehovah El Shaddai has sent me here from the U.S. to tell you that your season of struggle has ended. Shout a louder amen. Shout a louder amen than that. He is also, beloved, he is more than sufficient to provide. I don't care how much you've messed up, how many failures you have had. Later tonight, our daddy is going to come and the invitation is going to be given. You have not gotten so far 
that he can't reach you and bring you back to himself. The Bible says in Psalm 65 verse 3, Psalm 65 verse 3, it says, my iniquities prevailed against me, but as for my transgressions, you have provided atonement for them all. I want you to know that the Almighty God is seeking for you, searching for you, looking for you. As Jehovah El Shaddai, he will have more than enough for you. As I conclude, that name Jehovah El Shaddai does not just mean the Almighty One. It does not just mean the more than enough or all sufficient one. It also means the many breasted one. It means that just like a mother, he is a God who has an inexhaustible supply. When my first son was born, I'm talking more than 40 years ago. When my first son was born, my wife was nursing, and I thought, great. I don't have to get up during the night. All the pressure is on her because she has to feed him, and I don't have it in me to feed him. But my son had difficulty with latching. I don't know how this thing worked, but my wife's bosom would fill with milk at the exact same time that my son would be crying. Her bosom was ready to satisfy even before he cried. The problem was, since my son could not latch on, my wife would be ready to release, but my son didn't know how to receive. The doctor told my wife that she would have to pump her bosom set the milk aside so that it would not be wasted so that my son could still get what was supposed to be his and he would not miss it because he could not latch. Immediately, that put me back in the picture because now that my wife had to pump, I now, when my son would cry, could get up in the night go get the bottle that he needs and give him what he's supposed to have. Don't miss it. What my son was crying for was not disregarded. It was not put away. It was set aside until the right time came for him to be able to receive it. I've come to talk to someone who is saying, it seems like God has forgotten me. It seems like God did not give me what I was asking for. Maybe the problem is your faith was not strong enough to latch on, but this night, the Almighty God has sent various ministers here so that what you thought was going to be a delay is being released right now. And here I am to tell you that the all-sufficient God says that this last cry that you cry tonight is going to get your destiny helpers to release your breakthrough to you. Stand to your feet very quickly. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, that which was put on hold for me, release it to me now. Go ahead and pray now, pray. 
that which is put on hold, that which looked like it was delayed. Jehovah El Shaddai, Almighty God, more than enough God, many-breasted one God, double-portion God, release it to me. Release my breakthrough. Release my job. Release my career. Release my healing. Everything that's been withheld, let it be released tonight. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father and my God, we thank you. Daddy, we bless you. We magnify you. Daddy, you said you sent your word to heal our disease and deliver us from our destruction. Father, let your children experience deliverance tonight in Jesus' name. Every breakthrough that has been put on hold, Daddy, bring it back around today in Jesus' name. Whatever their faith was not able to handle before, tonight, my Father and my God, let their faith receive it in Jesus' name. And I pray, my Daddy, wherever they may be, let what was a prayer request when they came here be a testimony when they come back tomorrow night. Thank you, my Father and my God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. Clap your hands and give our God a praise.